Well, this is um, uh, an exhibition which spans over various years of, um, of my work, from uh, roughly around 94 to 2014 to date. There's a, 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 new, uh, a, a new commission um, video project, um, but goes back to... Um, painting and object work that I was doing in the in the 90s and then there's a series of um, uh, vitrine works and um, and also some older video works so it's roughly a, a show which is sort of um, weaves various themes uh, from my work from 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 those years yeah. Well, the themes in the work um, are, uh, yes, a lot to do with um, uh, myself in a way as a as a as a as a, a foreign person living in Mexico, and in a sense, the way that I've seen a certain presentation of objects, um, Mexico City itself, um, and uh, there's sort of various idiosyncrasies of, um, of certain social situations and, um, in, in Mexico. And more recently, those have expanded to other places, like Brazil and Lima, and how those sort of tensions uh, um, of, of, let's say, even political social situations in those places and be sort of drawn back to, to myself and my experience as a, uh, 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 as a subject, really. So um, there's a lot of... Um, I talk a lot about um, uh, the urban context and nature as well. So there, again, there's a sort of tensing between uh, this material culture uh, and, and the natural world. I think my relocation to Mexico um, was somehow crucial in my development as an artist. Um, I left uh, England in 1989, uh, and my work at that point was very much informed by um, a probably a minimalism and a, and a certain formalist, uh, formal attitude to to. Uh, to my work, and so that over the uh, when I when I arrived to Mexico, I think I was immediately struck by this baroque nature of the place and, and the culture. So all that 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 sort of immediately started um, uh, kind of filtering into my work, and um, um, I suppose in a way a, I'm very interested in colonial, post-colonial. Um, issues and and migration, so all those things have, have filtered in, and also I would say colour has been a really important uh, sort of factor in, in in my work, and um, and the place itself has yeah undeniably, undeniably influenced that. Yes, yes, I work in um, various mediums. I work in uh, painting, um, video. Uh, I work with objects, not necessarily sculpture, but I work with objects, uh, collage, and um, installation works. Um, I would say that there's a lot of um, the base of my video works is really a, it, it comes from a pictorial practice, not always painting as such, but there's. I think the way that I frame and the way that I think about film comes from painting and not necessarily film itself. Um, so um, if I'm working on a project, say, that, um, which it might take me to a very far off place, and, uh, uh, and usually that project comes first and then a series of paintings um, are usually run tandem to the process of um, video making and then the the and what's been happening recently is the objects have, uh, have started to make up some kind of um, 
archaeological, um, uh, oftentimes not very rational sort of um, connections about the way I'm thinking about video works. So I think that they, the paintings and all the pro all the all the mediums kind of ideally would tie up in or could tie up in one one installation. But I made Spiral City in um, 2002, and I've been uh, making a lot of work on the ground in Mexico City, lots of uh, work around the color orange and around the, um, that, this sort of synthetic um, archaeologies or future archaeologies in, <laughs> around the street in Mexico City. And so um, I just felt that I wanted to sort of broaden that view and see the, the, the city from above and understand that um, the sort of relationship between the microcosmic world or macrocosmic world and the microcosmic world. <laughs> so um, I rented this uh, helicopter and uh, circled around the city um, thinking about, um, in a sense, how that, that all those, that, 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 that sort of crystalline world of the street that I've been thinking and, you know, on the, on the ground, how could that be translated to, to the air and just very much thinking of the grid um, and how that grid in, of Mexico City was constantly sort of spiralling on itself, thinking a lot of the work of Robert Smith's and Spiral Jetty um, and how the Spiral Jetty, in a sense, what I was doing, the Spiral City was drawing a spiral line around the city you know, um, thinking of perhaps how a drawn line over the city could relate back to the, that geolog geological strata of, um, of Robert Smithson's work. Well, Edward James, I was, I was aware of his um, uh, huge um, uh, sort of sculptural follies that he'd been making in, in, the, in the jungle in the... Um, uh, from the 19, 1960s to the, to the nine, to 1980s, really over 20 years. And I'd always sort of been aware of that, that his work. Um, and I was also interested, obviously, that he was, he was English, uh, that he was connected to the Surrealists and Dadaists. Um, and, and I was very interested in, in this sort of extra urban space that he'd built and how that extra urban space could perhaps relate to my previous works in Spiral City, really. Um, so um, I suppose it was this sort of layering of trying to make some sense of, a, of what that, his sight could mean to us today. Uh, so there was very much, I suppose, this sort of a critique of his, uh, of his work and also a kind of tensing or a, a, a bringing back of how the exotic landscape could be critiqued and seen through eyes of another British person. Yeah. Well, Fordlandia is um, a small settlement uh, on the river Tabajos in the Amaz middle of the Amazon. And it was a place um, and small industry set up by Henry Ford in the 1920s uh, to develop natural rubber for his tires uh, to be sent back to the United States. Um, and it was a, a sort of an Americana um, uh, that was set up in the... Um, in the middle of the jungle, but with, with uh, American uh, transportable houses that were taken down there, American workforce, at least in terms of at the managerial level, and um, an American machinery. Well, what interested me about Fordlandia um, was the way in which the natural world meets with the industrial world. Um, so I was thinking really about the, 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 what's left there in Fordlandia now is just a kind of ruin of the old machines and um, uh, the, the old warehouse. So my film, in a way, documents that um, 
in a sense, that failure of, of that moment, the failure of the project itself, um, and the way in which um, these this natural industrial processes sort of mix in or tied in with the natural processes, which is the, the tapping of the rubber trees themselves, and then the animal world on the other hand. So I think that what interested me was that, that was that this very dystopian project, how in a sense nature could form some kind of resistance to that um, uh, a sort of modernist project or failed modernist project. Well, the vitrines are um, a kind of collection of thoughts, really. Um, depends how many objects are going to end up in them, but it, 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 usually I call the vitrines are the amount of uh, pieces that the, the title will be the amount of pieces that are in the vitrines um, and the XXX amount of thoughts on insubstantial th thoughts and matters. So uh, it's a kind of, again, a, a, a kind of, I would say, archaeology which works in a dialectical sense of the, the, what you might see one object next to another might not necessarily relate visually, but in my mind conceptually does. It's a way of kind of tensing lines through history, through nature, through archaeologies, and through um, conscious and unconscious thought, I think. So in a sense, they're, they're, they're the sort of background to the, the, the video projects without wanting to do some more sort of literal sketches or explanations. I think that they function in some way as an echo to my thought processes while I'm making the video works, but they also sort of dig a little bit further into um, histories from all over the world. <laughs> well, um, there in the vitrines, there are um, sort of um, maquettes, some maquettes which I've made, there's plastic animals, there's maps, a couple of maps, there's uh, resin uh, moulds which, uh, which, I've, which I've cast, collections of old postcards which might be from, some of them are from Fordlandia, some of them are from the sort of old folly-like buildings, and some of them are, um, a couple of them are, are, are architectural images, more modernist images, which might relate to <clears throat> a little bit more closely to Milton Keynes. So in a sense, I'm making this sort of triangle through um, industrialization, through materials, through and animals, and at the same time through this um, sort of pink, fleshy-like substances, there's also three or four videos which are on iPads, um, and the video is of a, of a piece, a small piece called Bulto, which is this pink package, it's sort of unknown package, <laughs> which seems to travel through all the vitrines, and there's, there's three or four instances of it throughout the, throughout the vitrines. Um, and, and then there's these more sort of architectural structures as well. Well, I think seeing your work all together is, is, is surprising and, 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 and frightening at the same time. Um, obviously, you, there's one, there's a sort of a lineal uh, a line which you could see from, from in terms of uh, dates. But at the same time, I think what's always really rewarding for artists is that you, you start to see all those uh, unconscious thoughts that um, appear when you when you really do see everything together in in two or three big rooms. So it's also for me going to be interesting being somebody who's English and at the same time not English. So how that that reaction uh, will be to the work.